Hey, Coach Burt, Ultimate Soccer Coaching here today. Um, today I'm going to show you one of my favorite uh, activities or series of activities uh, that we use for really just like team warm-ups. And these are called circle, dr circle drills. These are very popular um, over in England, especially with a lot of Premier League teams. Um, so let's take a look at them today. Very simple setup. I'm actually just showing you three circles, but you'll only actually need to use one circle at a time. Uh, and you're looking at about a 20-yard uh, diameter circle. So the easiest way to do it is, um, is just put a cone in the middle and then put step off 10, step off 10, 10, 10, 10, etc., etc. If you do about eight points, uh, that should be sufficient, uh, each 10 steps from the middle. Um, or if you're on a line field, you can just use the center circle, which makes it super, super easy. So we use all, all different kinds of skills you can do with these. Um, I like to use them for different types of uh, passing combinations and warm-ups. So real simple, you're going to have your players lined up around the circle, and we'll just start out with player, player one here. And player one's going to have uh, the ball. Um, you're going to have a player here in the middle. And then you'll have players lined up all around the outside. Um, so you'll have player three, player four, um, player five however many you need. Uh, one little tip for you, if you're working with younger players, and I'm saying here probably 12 and under, um, they really don't have very good concept of space. So what you're going to probably want to do is have cones spread out around the circle, even if you're on a lined field, uh, so that they have a place to sort of stand and make sure that by the time you've, you've done a couple of repetitions that you don't have all the kids standing on top of each other. So a little, little bit of a tip. Older players, uh, they should be able to figure it out. They should at this point be able to understand how to space themselves out. And actually it gives you a coaching uh, opportunity if they're not spaced out uh, to get on their case and talk about spacing, talk about the importance of spreading out, providing support and things like that in a game scenario. Uh, just point out, you know, you wouldn't stand right on top of somebody in a game. You're not going to do the same thing in the activity. So very simple, uh, the first repetition, player one's gonna start out and he's simply gonna dribble into the grid and then he's gonna play a pl uh, pass um, to player two. And then he's gonna take his position in the middle. So player one will go in the middle. Uh, player two, take a couple of touches um, and then play a pass to one of the outside players. And then the sequence is gonna begin again. This player is gonna take a couple dribbles, he's gonna pass to player one who's now in the middle and we continue the sequence. So that's a good warm up sequence. Uh, it's really easy. If you have a lot of players, if you have a, you know, a full squad with 15, 16 players, then you might want to start out with two players in the middle and two balls on the outside and do the same activity. And again, when you get multiple balls going, uh, the kids have a responsibility to then begin to communicate. So you know, when a player brings the ball in, they need to call the name of the central player that they're going to pass to. That way that player knows to expect, expect the ball. So good opportunity for communication. Uh, so we start with that usually. The next one um, starts to get a little bit more complicated, uh, but this is when we start to work on some one-two passing. So we're going to have here, uh, we'll have player twos outside the square. We'll put player three down here. And the activity starts with player one. Player one has the ball. Player one is going to dribble into the grid, and he's going to play a one-two pass first time with player two. So he's going to play him right here and he's going to immediately get the ball back. So player one's now right here. From there, he's going to turn and he's going to find one of the other peripheral players, let's say player three, and he's going to play player three, exit the circle, and take player three's spot. Player three is going to then dribble into the circle, play a one-two with someone, find a third participant, play them the ball. Where it gets really uh, good with this activity is when you get multiple balls going. And you're going to want to get there as soon as possible because, as we've talked about uh, many, many times, you're going to want to uh, maximize the number of touches your kids get in practice. So if you're doing this for 10 minutes with one ball and you, and you do the same activity for 10 minutes with two balls, they're going to get obviously twice as many touches. So start it out with one ball, run a couple of repetitions until you're sure they have it, and then move to a second ball. Communication is going to become vital here because the outside players are going to need to know if they need to return a pass or if they need to take the pass and bring it into the circle. So what we use is we just use two very simple terms. Uh, we use bounce it and take it. So when we say bounce it, we want them to act just like a wall, bounce the ball right back. When they say take it, that means it's their cue to receive the ball and then their turn to come into the circle. Uh, what we found with this, which was a lot of fun, is that when we begin to play possession and other activities, 
when players wanted one, two opportunities, they would say bounce it. So they would play a guy, bounce it, bounce it, and they take a couple steps over, pick the ball up on a different angle, and now they had a new passing lane. So it really transfers nicely uh, to the game situation. So that's the second repetition. Now we're going to go to the third, which is uh, going to be similar, um, but for this one, uh, a li little bit of difference. So we're going to again have player two here. We're going to have player three here, player one with the ball. And remember in this activity, um, you're going to play the one, two, then he's going to play to the third player and that third player comes in the grid. Now we're going to change it up a little bit because we want to create a third man run situation. So what's going to happen now is player one is going to dribble the ball into the grid. He's going to play a one, two pass with player two. Player two is going to hold his run for just a moment. Uh, player one receives the ball back here plays a pass into player three, and then player three is going to play a pass to player two who's now made a run into the grid, and player one takes his space. So what we have here is player one comes in, plays a one-two pass with player two, player two makes that run, ball goes outside of player three, who then finds player two making the run, and player one exits the grid, and you just continue that process over and over. Uh, again, a little bit more complicated, but it's going to really mimic the game. So we have here very simple pass, a one-two pass combination, and a third man run. So anyway, those are some great things you can do with circle drills. Um, I want to encourage you, if you're right now viewing this on our YouTube channel, to hit the subscribe button above. And what that's going to do is put you in the loop to uh, receive notifications whenever we post other uh, activities and other, other drills and things like that. If you're viewing this on our blog site, you're going to see a link below our blog to our YouTube channel. And we, again, recommend that you go check it out. Um, go to our YouTube channel, uh, subscribe, and look forward to giving you some more uh, great soccer drills and tips. Thanks.